from CNN, why Trump's Supreme Court appointee, Neil Gorsuch, just protected LGBTQ rights. And I, I, I mean, I, ugh, ugh, I need, I need like a libertarian version of the word problematic, uh, you know, because that's the SJW. This is problematic. You know, they, they kind of have that word. I feel like a dork using it over and over again, making fun of them when I don't have my own word. But yes, I, I'm all for LGD, LGBTQ rights. And by the way, a lot of people in the LGBTQ community are against the use of the term LGBTQ because of the divisiveness of the precise identification, the limit of anybody who's not identified. And as I got to give a hand out or a, a, a shout out to my friend, um, Mike Sir Shipley, fellow Arizona libertarian activist for getting uh, libertarians to use the term GSM, gender and sexual minorities which technically that's everybody, right? If you're a straight man, you're, a, you're in the minority. Like, you know, it's, it's kind of important to recognize that as well, even though, uh, you know, uh, we, we might be the, the biggest block. Yeah, we are uh, technically a minority. And like in a lot of states, white people already are minorities, right? So I think California crossed that line uh, a few years ago. But did, did did he protect their rights? Uh, does, does, does someone writing words on paper in Washington get them protected rights? And, and are these are these rights that they are being granted or rather privileges? Let's find out, shall we? Justice Neil Gorsuch, President Donald Trump's first nominee to the Supreme Court, delivered an opinion Monday that will change how more than 7 million LGBTQ individuals will live and work in the United States. You know, there's a certain tyranny in the political correct language here. Really, you want me to say LGBTQ every time uh, to refer to? Mm. And and there's there are longer versions of this acronym. I I didn't plan to rail against the. I meant to rail against government with this segment. I'll, don't worry, I'll get to it. In a watershed moment from an unlikely author. That means gay, lesbian, and transgender workers. So here it's just the GLT. It's not It's not uh, LGBTQ. There are a couple of letters left out here. Gay, lesbian, and transgender workers are protected by federal civil rights law. It is a stunning defeat for judicial conservatives who work to ensure Gorsuch's nomination and Republicans, including Donald Trump, who stymied President Barack Obama's nominee for the Supreme Court, liberal Merrick Garland in 2016, the ruling, Puts Gorsuch in the history books. Title VII of the Civil Rights Act, Gorsuch wrote, which bars discrimination because of sex, also covers claims based on sexual orientation and gender identity. But for close observers of his writings and actions on the bench, Gorsuch simply was showcasing his fidelity to rules of statutory interpretation, relying on the plain text of the law that were championed by the late Justice Antonin Scalia. It is the clearest example yet that Gorsuch, who is by any definition a conservative judge and has cast key votes in the past, siding with the president, is capable of flexing his independence, striking a distinctive course and disrupting expectations. All the silly reading into it is kind of besides the point. I don't want to say it's nonsense, but it is it is kind of a distraction from the bigger point here because, you know, it's this political fight. It, it is thought of that the Supreme Court is the ultimate arbiter of right and wrong in the United States. And just it, it's it's treated like that when even a, a cursory examination will show it is anything but that, that it has repeatedly upheld horrific policies of discrimination, of violence, of uh, violations of the non-aggression principle, disrespect for the freedom of individuals and individual rights, uh, because it, it's about fidelity to the Constitution. And really, it is the uh, the ultimate authority in settling disputes as backed up by the authority of the U.S. government. It is not like the, this independent check on the political system. It's thought of that way, and it was sold to the American people that way, and is, is continuously sold to America's children with government propaganda-filled textbooks this way. That it's that it's this independent thing, and occasionally, 
the Supreme Court does put a limit on government power, right? But it's not because that's its goal. Its goal is to maintain the authority, to maintain the government power. So if it's it's like tapping on the brakes, right? Runaway government, government, like the job of Congress is to rip the American people off as best they can to spend as much money for their corporate sponsors as possible. The job of the president is to, to, to keep the system you know, coherent and to be a unifying figurehead and, and to give people something to fight over with a personality and identity. And the Supreme Court is there to, to, to tap the brakes on these runaway elements when they get so far out of control that the people are like, hey, we're coming with the pitchforks. The Supreme Court can say, oh, hold on a second. Wait, let me let me check the, the, the hold on. We have a rule book. Let me make sure that the people who you're upset about were following the rules. Uh, oh, no. Oh, uh, excuse me. Uh, yes, it, it does appear that the government officials uh, who you are upset with did violate the rules, and and they will be uh, appropriately reprimanded or or put in check, and and you can put your pitchforks away now and, and go back to sleep, and everything's okay with the system. So, like that's that's just understand that that, and and that's not comprehensive, that's not decisive, but that is a way more accurate understanding of what the Supreme Court is than the propagandists of authority would have you believe. So does it, does it, are they looking at what's right and wrong in this decision? Uh, you know, is you know, what this, you know, the, 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 the debate about this, you know, and people going back and forth, like, is this right? Is this wrong? Or, you know, and, and fighting over these levers of power in a system that shouldn't exist in the first place, because the moral premise here to use this case as the example is, is very simple. They say they're protecting them. If, if there are two kids who want to play with each other, and or there are two kids, one of them wants to play with the other and the other one doesn't. The other one wants to be left alone. If I force them to play with each other, am I protecting the one who wants to play with the other from the state of not getting to play how you really have to twist the language to say that i'm protecting because that's oh i'm protecting you from discrimination so the kid doesn't want to play he says i'm discriminating against everybody i don't want to play right now i don't want to play with you because i don't like you they have the right you have a right to say i don't want to play with you i don't want to do business with anybody for whatever reason i don't you can't force me against my consent and that's what's so funny is this this great contradiction. How many people in the LGBTQ worshiping community would say, oh, yes, rape is wrong because uh, consent. You have to have consent. You have to have affirmative consent. And affirmative consent does not imply future affirmative consent. It has to be reaffirmed continuously. It has, you know, there has to be consent. If, if it's not consensual, it's rape or it's wrong. It's a forced relationship that you're for. Well, gee, you're taking away the consent from this relationship by saying we're forcing people to work together. And the, I mean, you have a right to discriminate. You have a right to disassociate. You can be doing it for good reasons, for bad reasons. I mean, in the, the big gender example that comes up is the strip clubs, right? Well, you're a strip club. I'm a male stripper. You can't discriminate against me because of my sex. Well, we're not discriminating against you because of your sex. We're discriminating against you because male clients at a strip the, the customers at a strip the people who go to strip clubs and yeah the, the, it's reversed yeah I, I get it yeah i know there's thunder from down under in las vegas and matt i i shouldn't know i shouldn't admit identifying other any other male sexual brands right um but uh you know yeah yeah i get it it goes the other way too but you know you, oh, you couldn't have a woman say well hey just because you're doing the, that male strip show, you can't just, I'm a female. Like, no, like you have to be able to, to discriminate based on whatever you want, whatever's good for you, your business. And how are we going to help people see what's best if we don't allow them to make mistakes? And we don't, you know, create that possibility. And how can we expect people to have faith in a system overall to protect your rights when it's fundamentally taking away your rights? And this gets to the, the whole bigger problem of forced association through government right like i i want to help people i want to donate to charity i don't want that money stolen from me to be used for these things or now i'm forced to associate with everybody who's getting money for me or giving me money in this giant pool of, of money shuffling that i don't want to be a part of against my consent you know i i have to be a part of that 
you know, legal economic system. And this is kind of what this comes down to is they use the economics as the excuse protection from discrimination uh, is their excuse to take away consent from individuals to take away the right to disassociate. Um, so, you know, you want to put it in negative terms. I'm not going to shy away from it. Yes, you have a right to discriminate. We all do it all the time. And, you know, you look at personal relationships, um, you know, generally people tend to be attracted to people of similar race. And, you know, good for people who embrace the Bullworth strategy of, well, let's just keep screwing each other till we all come out the same color. You know, like, yeah, that's great. And if that's the future of humanity, that we're all the same color. You know, I'm, I'm all for that. It's a beautiful vision. Um, do we need to preserve, you know, ethnic separation, the pure bloodlines? No. If people want to do that, like if there's an incentive, I don't, I don't care, you know, but, uh, you know, I, in, 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 in my marriage, you know, we have, a, a, let's just say, a lot of different ethnic groups represented. Uh, and, and that's okay. That's, you know, but I also have the right to say, like, I don't want to be with someone for, for any reason whatsoever. And, and you can't say, well, that applies to personal relationships, but that doesn't apply to business relationships or, or anything else. And that the government can come in and intervene and say, we can, so, so you want to use the language that, that turns this on its head when it says that, uh, you know, gay, lesbian, and transgender workers are protected by federal civil rights law. No, it's that government has claimed the right to force people to associate with gay, lesbian, and transgender people against their will. And even if that's not uh, the way to go about it, it doesn't mean that there isn't a problem there with discrimination. I'm all for raising awareness. I'm all for protecting, like legitimately protecting the rights of people who uh, suffer discrimination in uh, in a in, in an in, or I should say, un, suffer violations of their rights. You don't have a right to a job. You don't have a right to choose where you work. You know, I mean, you, know, you, you don't have a right to choose for the business owner. Yeah, yes, I can work there because I'm I'm one of these protected groups. And since government is going to force you to take me as an employee, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose to work. Like, you don't have the right to take a job from someone else or to force someone to employ you or to use the government to force someone to employ you. You have the right to live and exercise your rights and the right to swing your fists only ends where my nose begins. I want to make sure that everybody's rights are equally protected and that government doesn't use discrimination like they do with these gender issues, like they do with racial issues, like they do with economic issues to keep us divided or manipulated anymore. Thank <laughs> you.